Hello everyone, this is Yasser from Fairfax QA Center. Today we will learn about the Defect Management tab of Application Lifecycle Management Tool. A defect is logged during the execution of test set or test cases when actual result is not matching the expected result. If you want to learn more about how to create the test cases and test sets, please refer to our previous videos. Before going to the ALM, and actually starting work in defect management module. Let us understand the different statuses of defect in ALM defect lifecycle. So there can be six statuses of defect in defect lifecycle. Let's go ahead and understand each status briefly. The first status is new. When the first time the defect is logged in ALM, its status is set as new. If developer accept this as a valid defect, the status move from new to open status. It means the developer started working on this defect. If developer think that this is an invalid defect and it can be any requirement change or any other reason, he or she can reject this defect posted by tester. In that case, the defect is moved to rejected status. When developer fix the defect, it moved to the fixed status. The tester can pick up all the fixed status defect for the retesting or verification or in more technical language for regression testing. In a retesting, if tester finds that this defect is still not fixed, he can reopen that defect. In that case, the defect status would be reopened. If the defect is fixed after retesting, the defect can move to the closed status. It means you don't need to work on this defect anymore. So this is the defect lifecycle. And the reopen of the defects continues until developer fix all these defects. I am in a server virtual machine that has already ALM installed. So let's go to our ALM desktop client. We have the username Chris, enter the password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hit authenticate button and hit login button. Before going into defects tab and creating a new defect, let me take you back to the test lab. In the test lab, if you remember, we have login test set and this one test case invalid email test. Since this is a manual test case, assume that we ran this test case manually and this test case passed. It means that our application is accepting the invalid email address. That is a defect. So let's go to the defects tab and create a new defect. Click on new defect button. This is the window of the new defect. Enter the summary of new defect, for example. Login page is accepting invalid email address. The red mark labels are the required field. Select the severity of this new defect. For example, I would say very high. You can also add optional information, for example, target release. R1. You can also select the target cycle. Enter the brief description of new defect. For example, the next option is attach. Attachments are very important when you are logging a new defect to prove to the developer that this is a valid defect. The attachments for a defect can be a screenshot or a video taken by Snagit or any other tool. And attachments can be a MS Word document that defines the steps with the proper order that you perform to find this defect. So let's go ahead and attach a new document. Click on attach file button. Select the file from your computer. For example, on desktop, I do have one screenshot PDFs, invalid email address screenshot. Select that file. And this file has successfully been added to our new defect. So next very important step is to assign this defect to developer. Let's go back to our detail tab. And you will see there's one option assigned to. You can select a user or developer who you want to assign this defect. 
I created a new user and named this as a developer. Select this user and this new defect has been assigned to a developer user. Please remember that developer name can be anything else. I only keep the developer name as developer to keep the thing simple. Click submit button. Click on close button. Our defect has successfully been created and assigned to user developer. You can also link this defect to the requirement for traceability purpose. So let's go ahead and do it. Click on defect ID. From the left panel, select link entities. Click on other tab. You will see a small plus button with a down arrow. Click on down arrow and there are two options. You can select the requirement by ID and you can select the requirement by name. Select the second option and from this window you can select the requirement. Expand requirement folder. Expand function requirement and this is the requirement client report login functionality. Check the client report, hit OK button, hit OK button. If you go back to requirements tab, click on requirement option, you will see that against login page requirement, there's one status failed. It means that the login page requirement has some defects. Click on requirement ID, click on linked entities. And you will see there's one defect against this requirement. Click on defect ID and you can see the defect detail. So this is the great traceability between the requirements and defect. Now let's go ahead and check the status of this defect. Right click on defect and select option defect details. And you will see the status is new because we just created this defect. Hit OK button. And this defect is assigned to developer. So let's log out from here and log in as a developer to check if the developer has access to this defect. Click on log out button. Enter the username developer. Under the password 123456, click on authenticate button. And this developer user has access to two domains. One is finance, one is the Fairfax. Select the finance domain, and there's only one project in finance domain. Click on login button. And you can see the defect is assigned to the user developer. So developer can click on defect ID. You can see the detail of a defect, also the attachment. And who detected that defect. So according to the defect detail, the developer can set the status of the defect as open, reject it if you think that this is an invalid defect and fix when he would fix this defect. Hit OK button. In this video, we learn how to second create a new defect, then add a detail in a defect, also the attachment, for example, screenshot and video, and how you can link the defect with the requirement, and how you can move back from requirement to defect and defect to requirement for traceability purpose. Also, when the tester assign a defect to the developer, how can developer go ahead and see the detail of the defect and how we can change the status according to the detail.